so thank you uh, for, for the previous presentation. Um, and now I turn to um, <clears throat> the last part of the, the last two parts of the analysis, uh, which are based on the within country analysis of this growth, employment, poverty nexus. Okay, so. The, the previous evidence, what we have uh, just shown, um, is based on 16 observations, okay, one per country with annualized changes over the whole period. Um, and what I'm going to show you is based on variation within country and over time uh, to study the response of these labor market indicators to growth, the response of poverty and employment uh, and earnings to employment, sorry, and earnings changes, and the changes in the earnings across the whole distribution of earnings. And, and there is a very subtle difference that we discuss um, in, in the paper between uh, the previous question and these ones. Uh, so just focusing on, on one of the examples, uh, what we were trying to answer before was across countries where the differences in import reductions uh, in, in the whole period linked to differences across countries in their economic growth rates. And what we want to answer now is whether uh, if a country grows faster, uh, what is the effect of this faster growth on poverty or the effect of uh, changes in labor market indicators on poverty. And so what we'll do, uh, what we find is that as you could uh, suppose, but we, we find that economic growth does reduce poverty, but at very different rates in different countries. Uh, and changes in poverty are direct uh, related in the welfare improving direction with percentage changes in, in some employment and earning indicators. But again, uh, they vary significantly uh, between countries. And so, um, what, uh, <clears throat> so what I just said is that we look at these relationships uh, by country over time, but in fact, what I'm going to present here, we leave the discussion country by country to the country papers and, and the cross country papers. What I'm going to show here are some uh, pooled regressions. So these are uh, averages for the whole region, uh, which are a bit tricky because as I said, there is a lot of heterogeneity. That is one of our main conclusions. There are very different patterns, but uh, for exposition here, we'll focus on this. And here we have highlighted uh, the, the trend in unemployment and the average unemployment rate for the whole region and GDP per capita. And so there is obviously this in regression form, uh, you, you will see a very strong uh, negative correlation between the two. Uh, mean labor earnings and GDP per capita are also, of course, uh, strongly positively correlated. And um, poverty and GDP are negatively and strongly correlated. So these are the main trends that we will look at. Um, but we also had uh, some what we call spaghetti graphs with, with uh, the trajectory of each of these indicators for each country in gray lines. And this is really very, very diverse. Okay, So these are very nice averages uh, that hide a bit of the heterogeneity in, in patterns uh, for the whole, for countries in the region. So. Uh, this is, these are the GDP elasticities for uh, some selected indicators, again, for pool data for all country years and, and, and with country fixed effects. Um, we find a strong negative elasticity of unemployment uh, with respect to GDP of about minus two. And broadly speaking, we find a, a, a positive correlation between GDP and the, some of the indicators of job mix, uh, job quality of, um, and quality of employment. Okay. Uh, Earnings increase more than, proportion, than proportionally um, with respect to GDP, okay? So, so we, we find this effect and we'll see how this impacts into the poverty rates. Uh, and poverty is, of course, strongly correlated with changes in GDP um, with a higher, uh, and this is remarkable, a higher uh, elasticity uh, in absolute terms for extreme poverty than for um, moderate poverty, for the 2.5 um, poverty line uh, compared to the four dollar a day poverty line, uh, which which means that that growth was really successful in lifting the earnings so at the bottom of the distribution a bit less as as we move further away to the right of the distribution. And we're going to show you some evidence in this respect uh, in in two minutes. Um, we also find some some surprising uh, lacks of association, some no correlations. For instance, we found no correlation between changes in GDP and changes in high and low earnings occupations, high and low earnings sectors. Okay, we were surprised about that. And this is certainly something uh, that is worth um, looking more in depth in, 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 in specific case studies that I know are being conducted by people in the audience. So this is something we would like to know about, definitely. Um, 
And as I said, a lot of heterogeneity uh, hiding uh, behind these, these averages. Um, and these uh, lots of heterogeneities and also lots of um, differences, not only in the magnitude, but also in the patterns, okay? So even if the averages are significant and look nice, these are two examples, Bolivia and, and Brazil, there's a very clear positive correlation between changes in mean labor earnings and changes in GDP. And for Brazil, at the bottom right, um, we have a very nice negative correlation between changes in GDP and changes in poverty, but that relationship is definitely not there. I would give this as an example of no correlation uh, in, a, in an introductory statistics class, right? Uh, with Bolivia, okay, that is one of the stars in, in, in our in our um, <clears throat> case studies. So uh, this is just an illustration of this heterogeneity. Um, regarding the poverty and extreme poverty elasticities with respect to selected indicators, again, the unemployment elasticity is, is strong and significant and it is higher for extreme poverty. This is not something we're necessarily expecting, um, and, but it's an interesting finding. And the earnings elasticity is, is greater than one for extreme poverty and about one for moderate poverty. Uh, and these elasticities are lower than the poverty growth elasticities. I'm not sure it's completely kosher to, to compare them like this, but uh, somehow the changes in labor earnings seem attenuated compared to those uh, of GDP in, in their effect on poverty. Uh, and some of the indicators uh, of quality of employment um, are also correlated, but not, for instance, the share of uh, workers registered with Social Security, which seems to suggest that formality is something that is happening more in the middle rather than at, at the bottom. Uh, changes in formality that, that as um, as have been illustrated earlier, were, were important. Uh, they seem to be happening not at the bottom, but at the middle of the distribution. I think this is something that, that ought to be uh, studied in more depth uh, too. And again, caveat emptor, uh, heterogeneity in these elasticities between countries. Um, what about the changes in the labor earnings across the earnings distribution? So I had just had lunch with Michael Grimm, so I should say uh, we're showing uh, anonymous growth incidence curves. Um, and, and Gary has written extensively about this. Um, what we find in these uh, incidence curves is that, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, the main finding that we reported earlier was that mean labor earnings increased in 11 of the countries we study. They still fell in five of these countries, okay? So th there's, there's uh, heterogeneity in the region, but for the 11 countries in which they increased, um, we have positive changes along all the distribution. Okay, and that is great. And for the remaining two, we have positive changes for all but the top decile. Okay, so we, we, we divide, we basically have 16 countries and, and 10 deciles, so we have 160 deciles. Um, in 70% 70 per, 70 of these deciles, if we group people in the region like this, experience increases in, in labor earnings, and 30% of these deciles saw no growth, and these are almost all based in the five uh, from the five countries where uh, mean earnings actually fell, okay? Um, and in more than half of the countries, the changes in percentage terms were larger, uh, larger for the poorer d size and, and others it was in the middle d size. So these were definitely uh, progressive changes, okay? So, so that's why we see these uh, reductions in poverty and reductions in inequality over the period. Now, uh, and I won't show this here, but it's discussed in the paper, and, and it's a bit, this is a bit of the, so the previous was kind of the good news. This bit is a bit uh, depressing. Um, if we do these growth incidence curves, not in um, relative terms, okay, not in percentage terms, but in dollar terms, um, in 10 countries, the larger absolute changes were in the ninth and, and tenth and decimals. And the earnings were mostly unchanged in dollars for the poorest DCI in most of the countries. So this seems contradictory, but it's uh, just the fact that the base rate is so low that small changes in dollars uh, represent very large uh, proportional changes. Okay, so this evidence should be um, should be taken into account when I show you uh, these very nice uh, graphs of proportional changes. So. Bolivia is one of the countries that saw an increase in all d size except for the top d size, um, <coughs> as measured by, before Nora looks at me, uh, as measured in household surveys. So uh, you probably have more to say about that. Uh, and, and, and so these are clearly uh, 
progressive changes, okay? Up to the median, we have uh, positive changes and we have, I'm sorry, not, we have positive changes all over. We have changes uh, above the mean for uh, those below the median and below the mean for those below the median. And the same is true in Brazil and in Chile with lower level of growth. So Chile here looks like more modest, but this is like 10%, okay? So it's, it's, uh, it's still a lot. Bolivia is an, an outlier in Brazil is a, a, a very good success story. Um, Colombia, in the case of Colombia, is, we included it here because it's a bit uh, more strange. We have uh, relative declines with respect to the mean uh, average change for the bottom and the top decile and, and an increase mostly for these middle classes, uh, whatever, however we define them. Uh, Costa Rica also positive growth for all decines, but uh, regressive rather than progressive with, with the top quintile um, experiencing above average. Uh, changes in, in income and the Dominican Republic with uh, falling, um, falling incomes for everyone, for all the designs, uh, but somehow progressive because the top design had experienced a larger uh, drop as measured by household surveys. Um, so the summary of, of the findings for this part of the analysis, uh, the response uh, of these within country analysis, looking at the year by year changes, uh, we find um, that some labor market indicators and all poverty indicators improved uh, when GDP increased uh, in, in each country uh, with heterogeneity between these countries. Uh, there are also um, correlations between poverty and, and changes in the welfare improving uh, direction for some uh, labor market indicators, most notably unemployment and the share of salaried employees, and also with earnings, uh, with high heterogeneity again. And in terms of the changes in earnings across the earnings distribution, um, there were uh, positive changes for most groups of the population and higher proportional changes, at least, for uh, at the bottom of the distribution, implying uh, progressive changes in, in earnings. Now, uh, looking uh, at the extremes of, the, of, of, of our period under study um, is very nice, but we have this blip uh, in between the, the, the Great Recession. We, we had these discussions about how to call this international crisis, Great Recession, whatever you want to call it, um, in, in 2008. Uh, and so we definitely uh, wanted to see, and, and, and discussions with Finn and, and people wider, we, we, we wanted to concentrate to see a little bit what happened during this period uh, in the region with respect to growth and, and labor market indicators. Um, and so average GDP was stagnant in 2000-2003, but then it increased in every year except for 2008. Uh, this crisis was milder in Latin America than in uh, high-income OECD countries with reductions in GDP of 1.5 compared to 4%, okay? Um, but still, unemployment increased at the beginning of the period with, with uh, stagnant GDP, but it fell every year with growth except for the crisis in 2008, and we have several of these indicators of these labor market indicators that um, deteriorated in, from 2008 to 2009. Uh, <clears throat> but notably, poverty increased in only five of the countries in our sample, and it continued falling in eight out of the 16 countries in our, in our uh, sample, and extreme poverty only increased in one country. Okay, so something different was happening here with respect to other crises. Um, <clears throat> we have specialists on, in, on crisis in Latin America here, and you, this is definitely something uh, different, okay? Um, the recovery was also quicker in, in Latin America uh, with respect to, to countries of the OECD, high income, OECD countries, um, and so to, 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 in a nutshell, what we see is an initial worsening in labor market indicators, but a relatively quick recovery of these indicators that even surpassed the pre-crisis level at the end of the period we study, which is 2012, 2013, depending on, on the country. So this is, um, <clears throat> this is the increase uh, in, in unemployment we observe in average terms, and this is the slight fall in average GDP, uh, but this, is, this looks big, but it, nothing really dramatic happened. And what we do in the paper, we discuss this, of course, in much more detail, but um, the blue lines here are the proportion of labor market indicators either not affected, uh, that had total recoveries or partial, partial recoveries uh, by the end of the period we study with respect to 2008. Uh, and so 
only the, the little beige um, bars here represent indicators that continued worsening. And we can see that in most of the countries, most of the indicators uh, did not do worse over, over this period. Uh, what happened next? The problem with this multi-year project is that time still goes on. We would love it to freeze like, a, I don't know, a, a guinea pig brain or something like that, but economies go on and stuff keeps happening and you need to refrain from the temptation of adding one more year and then never finishing your papers. Um, we are not always successful uh, regarding that temptation. Um, but these are some projections for the last part of the period. Something still seems to have happened, okay? Uh, inequality is increasing. Uh, we have here projections for 2014 slightly, but still increasing uh, since 2012 for the first time in, in 10 years. And poverty, while still falling on average for the region, uh, is falling clearly for the last two years at a, at a much slower rate. So um, this is one of the questions, one of our... Uh, so basically we take the big countries and we extrapolate for some of the, the big countries and the ones that have um, data available for 2014 and we fill in uh, as best we can. Pulling, no, this is the average uh, 16 countries, one country, one vote. This is UN presentation. Um, so final remarks. Um, I will not go through the summary of findings that, that uh, Gary presented at the beginning because we just uh, mentioned them also in, in detail. But I just want to focus on the last one. Uh, real GDP uh, per capita grew in all Latin American countries over the period. Most labor market indicators improved in all but one and poverty rates fell in all countries but one. Okay, so this is really uh, uh, remarkable. And so uh, we have people in the audience, there's, there's the, 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 the cornea volume on, on, on um, inequality and, and Luis Felipe's and Nora volume also on inequality. Uh, some of the bits and pieces of this story we knew, but we, what we wanted to focus on was on the addition, the, the, the relationship uh, with changes in labor markets and, and these pieces of the story. Uh, and we hope that this is informative and adds um, to what has been done. Um, now, the conclusion is basically that we have new questions, okay? So uh, is this time different for Latin America? I, we shouldn't buy uh, statements about this time is different. Uh, to, we shouldn't take them too seriously because it's never clear. But uh, in the long run, one would be tempted to say, well, there's been some kind of structural change. Uh, we have a new pattern of more inclusive growth uh, mediated as we've shown by, by labor markets. Uh, but perhaps this is transient, okay? So this is, I think, the fundamental question, how much of this will be permanent and how much not. Uh, and, and a related uh, question is in the short run, whether the resilience to the crisis that we observe, both in terms of the macroeconomic indicators and labor market indicators, is a new aspect of the region. We, uh, we surpass stop and go and, and we will grow happily and be resilient to crisis, or was this a different crisis? Uh, definitely the, it didn't affect the region as it did before. And so what we need to know, uh, what we need more research on is on the micro, macro channels linking macro aggregates to labor markets and, and income distribution. So um, Augusto de la Torre was mentioning uh, aggregate demand as one of and expenditure as one of the main factors. Uh, certainly the conclusion from other work showed that trade, exports, terms of trade, uh, and, and the eruption of China and, and Asia as trading partners for the region were very important, but we need to know, and this is certainly something that has to be done uh, at a country basis, we need to know more on these linkages. Uh, there is some work on differential demand by skill levels. Um, definitely, and we, we only mentioned this briefly, but this played a huge role over the whole period, but also attenuating the effects of the Great Recession, there was a role for the expanded social protection and, and, and labor market policies, and certainly a more labor-friendly environment in, in countries in the region. The problem is uh, there's this paper I always use uh, on, by Nora and, and MacLeod on, on, you have the higher terms of trade increases in the, her terminology, I'm not saying anything, populist country, in the more populist country. So is it the terms of trade? Is it populism? Is it the say, are they jointly determined? Uh, I think there is a lot to be uh, 
written about the political economy of these processes within each country. Uh, but at the end of the day, what we want to know is which policies can foster the channels that allow uh, growth to be transmitted into lower poverty, better labor market indicators uh, to facilitate work-based inclusive growth in the region and also as lessons uh, to other regions. And in that sense, uh, so Francois uh, didn't make it today, we hope he will make it tomorrow, but uh, we use uh, in, in conversations with Finn Tarp, um, the, the, the Bourguignon Triangle that, that um, Gary mentioned at the beginning appeared, and, and in his famous 2003 papers, he says, well, do these results imply that growth has no significant impact on distribution? Uh, not at all. They mean that there is too much specificity in each country, uh, and case studies, country case studies, show that distributional changes in a given country have much to do with the pace and structural features of economic growth in the period under analysis, and we would like to add, mediated through uh, labor markets, we would like to add to this triangle, so it would be a square, we don't know what it will be, uh, we would add, uh, like to add the role of labor markets here. So, Kitos, uh, everyone, and uh, Carla has some comments for us.